Hey friends, it's Anna. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far and welcome to my February bullet journal setup. We are just going to jump right into the cover slash calendar page. I'm using my large Tombow black brush pen color N15 to write out the month in my basic calligraphy font. Below the title, I'm using a Stedler fine liner to draw the month's calendar. And as always, all the supplies I use will be written out with links in the description box below. Each square in the calendar is going to be five dots by five dots in my journal. And the journal is just a standard A5 size. Now I'm using some gouache paint in the color Violet from my Chocola set to create these little circles right where I'm going to write the day in each box to give the dates a little splash of color. I used a lot of water to dilute the paint so that these circles would be pretty translucent and the numbers would show up well when I write them on top. Next, I'm using my Alphabet typewriter font stamp set to label the days of the week. And at this point, I realized that I started stamping above Wednesday, not Monday. So to fix this, I used some spare dotted paper to create cutouts that I stamped, and then I'm taping those on top of the wrong letters. It's always good to have spare dotted paper if you make a lot of mistakes like I do. I am really excited about the artistic theme I chose for February, which is centered around an anatomical heart. It's a little nod to Valentine's Day, but without being super cutesy, which is not my style. So I sketched out this heart drawing with a pencil first and I'm now outlining it with a fine liner pen. I used several different inspiration pictures for this drawing, which were all slightly different. So this heart might not be perfectly medically accurate, but I figure it's not like I'm going to be using this drawing to train heart surgeons, so it's probably okay. Now you can totally leave the heart to just an outline, but I wanted to add a little bit more detail. So I'm using some cross contour and adding some smaller detail lines coming from the edges of each artery and vein. Typically I start with drawing some longer lines and then go back and fill in with shorter lines until I get the right amount of detail and darkness I want. My best tip for doing the cross contour is just to make sure you're alternating links and using more random strokes, which looks a lot more natural and appealing rather than just having a bunch of super uniform detail lines across each surface. I'm also going back and adding some additional lines where any vessel goes underneath another one so those shadows can give the picture a little depth too. To lighten the mood of the theme a little bit, I'm also going to add some violets kind of sprouting up from the vessels of the heart. 
I chose violets because they're one of the birth flowers for February and violet the color is a mix of blue and red or the colors representing veins and arteries. I kept the violet design super simple. I start out by drawing three petals that almost look like a Mickey Mouse head, which I could not unsee as soon as I had that thought. And then I add the tips of one or two other petals in the back top. Next, I draw a little triangle in the middle where the petals meet and add some shadows with a few lines near the center of each petal. Violets have sort of skinny and spiky leaves, and I'm adding those at the base of the stems. Be sure to add some veins within the leaves, because my husband made a comment that before I drew the veins in the leaves, it looked like the leaves were blood spurting out of the heart, which I could not unsee either. I'm also adding some flowers on the left side of the calendar as well to kind of even out the pages. Now I'm adding a little color to these drawings with some more gouache paint. I'm using some pretty muted shades of red and blue, and again, I diluted the colors by adding a lot of water to a small amount of paint. Now, the pages in my journal are pretty thick. They're 160 GSM, which prevents bleed through of almost any pen and marker, but it's still not watercolor paper, so I do try not to have my brush soaking wet when I'm painting on the pages. I really love how subtle the paint is though. I didn't want the heart or flowers to be too bold or overwhelming, and I didn't want the paint to overtake the drawing itself either. So this amount of color was exactly what I wanted. For the flowers, I mixed the red and blue I used in the heart to create a darker toned violet color, which I liked a lot better than the straight violet paint I used in the calendar. I wish I could go back and use that color for the dates on the calendar too, but oh well. Lastly, I wanted the calendar to stand out a bit more, so I just thickened those lines slightly by going back over them. And here's the final calendar spread. This next spread is something new for me. I'm titling it my general February planning spread using my smaller black Tombow brush pen. If you saw my January setup video, which I can link below in the description box if you haven't and want to check it out, but for January, I just left a little section at the bottom of my calendar spread for writing the month's goals, but I found that I wanted a little more room to expand on my expectations for the month. So on this left page here, I'm creating two boxes one will be for my intentions and one will be for tasks. And on the right page, I created a box for reflections. I'm titling all of these using my stamp set. So in my January setup, I also did a quarter one spread where I had room to list my intentions and I thought that was really helpful. 
You know, sometimes I have goals for a time period that aren't necessarily specific tasks I can check off. For example, I might want to prioritize the garden or put a focus on my health-related habits if I've been recently slacking there, or I might want to set an intention to keep my calendar a little freer. So I think this intentions box is a good place for things like that and just having a certain mindset to start the month. I wanted to leave room for tasks as well. First thing, I'll reference my rolling quarterly task list to determine any items from there I want to get done in February. And then this is also a space just to write down anything that comes up throughout the month that I want to get done as well. On the right page, I left room to journal some reflections at the end of the month. I think I'll write some specific prompts in the box. I just haven't decided what those will be yet, but stay tuned. I think I'm going to create a short when I fill that in. To decorate these pages, I'm drawing just the top part of a heart on the right page using the same techniques as before for the cross contour designs and I'm adding some more violets sprouting out the top of this heart as well. On the right page, I thought it would be cool to draw some more blood vessels, so I have some vessels woven together flowing across the page. And in the center of the page, I created a capillary which connects an artery and a vein. Again, I'll add some subtle color with the paint to the heart and flowers. I'm using blue for the veins and red for the arteries and, of course, violet for the violets. And for the capillary, I used violet in the middle where the red and blue are meeting. Stay tuned to see how I like this spread. I am sure I'll use this or some variation of it again in March, depending on how useful I find these sections. On to my next spreads, which will be my habit tracker for the month on this left page and my mood tracker on the right page. I'm back to my larger black brush pen for the habits title, and below I'm going to start off by drawing the outline of February six times for the six habits I want to track. I initially tried to paint these outlines with my violet paint, as you could see, but I decided to switch to drawing them with a pen. I think I didn't have a brush size small enough to paint the line easily at the right thickness. 
So I'm using the fine point tip of one of my Violet Tombow pins, color 679. Next, I'm writing out the days of the week at the top. Each dotted square within the calendar shape represents one day, and as you can probably assume, I'll track my habits by drawing an X on each square if I did the habit that day. And lastly, I'll label each calendar with the specific habit below in a cursive font. Something I don't have here, but I think I want to incorporate into future months is indicating my goal for how many times per week I want to do each habit because they're not all things I necessarily need to do every day. For example, I only aim to take my vitamins three to four times per week. I only try to stick to a bedtime on weekdays, etc. So I know I have these parameters in my mind, but I think it could be nice to have them written out next to the tracker so I can easily directly compare what I did to the goal. I'm keeping the art on this page pretty minimal, just drawing some violets in the corner. On the right page, we have my mood tracker, which I'm titling using a serif font. If you saw my January video, you know that mood trackers in my bullet journal are something I'm trying out for the first time this year. I am really enjoying using one so far in January. It's really interesting to look back at the week and kind of have a little summary of what my mental health was looking like. I'm just a few weeks in so far, so that's a really small sample size of time, but I think as I have more data throughout the year, it would be really interesting to see if any patterns emerge with my mood and things like sleep or if I did my morning routine, which is something I track on my daily pages and things like that. For my mood tracker this month, I'm drawing a branching vein and each little vessel offshoot represents one day. As you'll see, I'll number the days to the side and then I'll color in each day with a color that represents a different mood. I'm writing the key in the bottom left of the page there and using shades of red, purple, and blue in my Tombow pins to hopefully keep this looking like a blood vessel. If you guys use habit or mood trackers, I'd love to hear what tricks you use or any interesting insights you've gotten out of yours. So definitely tell me in the comments below if you want to share. Okay, the last spread we're going to be making for this setup is my first weekly spread for February. I'm titling it week 5 because this will be the 5th week of the year. I wanted to label all my weekly spreads with their number within the year instead of within the month, like week 1 of February, because I think that will help me keep track of how far into the year we've progressed, 
which could maybe then help with keeping in mind annual and quarterly goals. Below the title, I'm doing the same drawing as was on my calendar page, the heart with violets that will be growing on the top. I'm planning on alternating what drawing I'll put here for the rest of the weekly spreads for February. I could see maybe doing a capillary here and maybe even adding some violet flowers in the middle where the colors of blue and red meet. I might also do a branching vein for one week or just the top half of the heart with flowers. I'm planning on just alternating with some of the designs I've already created throughout the rest of the spreads. This weekly spread will take up four pages in my journal, each of which I'm dividing into halves and quarters. I'm going to cut out the outer half of the middle page to create a Dutch door, so my weekly task list, which will be on the right column of the last page, is always visible no matter what day of the week I'm on. I like to use a rolling weekly task list there, where I write down all the things I need to do that week in general, but don't have a specific day they need to be done on. When I have tasks that I know need to be done on a certain day or at a certain time, I'll go ahead and write them in the daily section and skip putting them on the weekly list. Usually on Sunday or sometime at the beginning of the week is when I fill out my days with events and list my weekly tasks. And I always reference my monthly calendar and spreads when filling that in to make sure I'm prioritizing what I've already established I wanted to accomplish this month. Then each day, it's part of my morning routine to spend a few minutes in my journal, fill out my habit and mood trackers for the previous day, and then write in any tasks I've decided I want to assign to that day from my weekly list. This week, I'm not expecting to have a lot on my list, so I only gave myself a quarter of a page for each day. On weeks where I think I'll have more tasks or more planning to be done, I'll give myself a whole half page column for each day. It just depends on the week. I'm finishing off the artistic design here by adding some paint to the heart and violets. And now I'm ready to start the month and plan my first week. All right, let's do a final flip through of the completed February setup. I am so happy with this theme and how all the drawings turned out. If I'm being honest, when I first sketched some of these in pencil, I felt a little discouraged and unsure if my vision was going to come through or if the drawings were going to look awful. I don't do a lot of line drawing or contour, so I was a little bit nervous about that, but I'm so happy I pushed myself to try some art that I'm not super comfortable with. That's ultimately how you get to be a better artist. Anyways, thank you guys so much for being here. I hope you have a great start to February, and I'll see you in the next video.